I checked this earlier and I can already tell that's not good right there. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're gonna do a good old fashioned kiln opening and if you've been with the channel for quite some time, you probably know the rules by now. We're gonna put stuff in a bad pile, we're gonna put stuff in a good pile, and then we're gonna put stuff in like the, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna reglaze it and try again, but I'm most likely just gonna throw it away when you're not looking pile. And usually in these videos, I have something that I thought was the best out of the best. But your job is to comment down below and tell me what your favorite one was. And just like every other video, if you disagree with me, you're wrong. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I stilted this big old piece, and it leant over on the stilt, and so it's most likely fused to this kiln shelf right here. I can already see the fuse line right there. The really messed up part is I'm gonna have to take this out at the same time I take the piece out, or else it'll mess up everything else in the kiln. Oh yeah, look at that. That's just fused right on. It came off, but not without a fight. I'm just warning you guys now, the large majority of this kiln load were bowls. Let's start off with this one right here. This is probably the worst thing that I got out of the entire kiln load, and the messed up thing is that I really liked this. It was simple, it was clean, it was nice, the foot was proper, it had a good glaze line on it, it had one very simple kind of wabi-sabi thing about it, and I, I liked it a lot, it was great. The rest of it is completely one color, and then you get to this one spot, and this really designates the front of the spot. It was really artistic. And then you look on the inside, and I kind of know what happened, I mixed two glazes that I didn't know if they went together, I mixed my Randy's Red and my Hyacinth, although I didn't make the Hyacinth myself, and I haven't tested it to make sure that it goes along with other glazes. So it pitted on the inside. I'm most likely going to see if I can mix this with another glaze and refire it to make those pits go away, but at the same time, this, this form right here, like kind of just elegant form is, is what I'm really into. Simplicity and ceramic artwork and pottery, and I, I liked this. This was perfect for me. And then, like, you look on the inside and it's just crap. Like a teenager going through puberty. Hopefully we can save this one. I'm gonna put it in the reglaze pile up here. Just because I, I like this front so much, right? Like, if I showed you this, a picture of this, you would have no idea what's going on, on the inside. But I couldn't, this is not food safe. It has too much pitting in it. So I'm most likely going to put a clear coat in there or something that's runny and refire it. You go in the retry pile. This one right here doesn't really have a lot wrong with it, to be honest with you. And it's surprising, because this is probably the second worst thing I got out of the kiln. I mean, at first glance, there's nothing really wrong with it. This is my floating blue, and this is my floating blue by itself. There's nothing really wrong with this, and it turned out majoritively blue for once in its life. It usually doesn't do this. I think the issue with it is that I got a lot of pitting on the outside. I'm not really sure what's going on with this pitting. I'm most likely going to put these back in the kiln. I'm not even going to reglaze this one. I'm just going to put it straight back in the kiln and see how it goes. But for some strange reason, I'm getting a lot of pitting on a lot of my blues right now. And I happen to notice that it's a lot with my floating blue and my Jeff Campana's blue. Or my Jeff Campana's mistake. And the color is actually really, really nice. L look at that. That's some gorgeous blue. There's nothing wrong, really, with the inside of it. So I'm going to put this in the retry pile just because I like it so much. I mean, look, look, look at this from, from the other side. This looks great, this looks like rainbow blue. It's fantastic, but too much pitting on the outside. Too much pitting on the inside, too much pitting on the outside. Pretty on the outside, ugly on the inside, uh, ugly on the outside, pretty on the inside. But if we're comparing these with people, I would love to be with this one instead of this one, because at least this one's pretty on the inside. We're gonna put this one inside the retry pile just because I think I can just refire this normal style and it'll come out just fine. Now this one here is exactly how my floating blue usually acts. Everything you're gonna see in this video is B-Mix, but this is floating blue on B-Mix. And I learned early on that floating blue works a little bit better in that it gives me a little bit more blue on B-Mix with no grog. I'm not really sure why. I'm sure it's just a composition of clay because as you guys know, clay isn't exactly how you get it out of the ground when you buy it in a bag. A lot of chemicals are added to it to make it a certain cone and that kind of decides its melting point and XYZ and yada yada yada. But 
those chemicals really do matter when you're talking about your glaze. The inside is gorgeous, but I think the one folly that I have with this is that, again, like usual, my floating blue wasn't acting right, and the outside just crawled a tiny bit. And by a tiny bit, I mean a lot. The inside's also gorgeous. The inside's friggin' beautiful, but as far as the outside goes, I think I just need to reglaze it. So this one is going in the reglaze pile. I know half the time I tell you it's going in the reglaze pile and I just throw it away anyway, but look, I'm really gonna reglaze these this time. I promise, with my fingers crossed, I promise. This right here is Jeff Campana's mistake in Randy's Red, and it came out really nice, actually. I know a lot of you might not know what I'm talking about when I say Jeff Campana's mistake, and long story short, I made a recipe of Jeff Campana's Grey that was created by Jeff Campana, but I put way too much cobalt in it. In fact, I put like 100% more cobalt in it, which is way more than you actually need. But it came out as a great mixer. It came out a lot more blue, and it works with a large majority of my glazes. But I don't know why, for some strange reason, and I don't think it has to do anything with the majority of the glazes in this kiln, it must be something in the atmosphere, all of my stuff is pitting right now, and I'm really hoping I could just put these back in the kiln and they'll be fine, but this is really annoying. This pitted right here, this right here, which is the same combination of the same exact glaze I just showed you, also ended up getting pitting. This floating blue bowl right here got pitting, which again, the inside looks fantastic, but the outside, again, got pitting. Even this tiny little bowl, which is basically another Randy's Red and Jeff Campana's mistake, also got a little bit of pitting on it. The only thing that I see that all of these bowls that I put in with the same exact kiln load seem to have in common, other than that they all pit, is that they were all inside of the same kiln load. So I don't think it's anything really to do with my glazes, it must be something in the atmosphere, and I think I know what it was. This is a really big reglaze pile. I think it was this right here. Yes, I know it looks magnificently glorious. I know this for sure. I made this glaze combination with my own developed glaze called Lumos and Tenmoku Gold over it. It makes a glaze that I like to call Snowfall. But there's an issue with this. It ended up being way too heavy and it was the only red clay body inside of my kiln. On top of that, it is heavily glazed and that's how I make my Snowfall glaze, is I oversaturate or I overglaze my Lumos with my Tenmoku Gold. But the issue with it is that number one, it runs like a mother. And because of that, it basically dripped all over. It's one of the reasons that I stilted this. I kind of knew it was gonna happen. But what I did not know is it would happen to that extent right there. To the extent that my literal stilt fused onto the glaze, which fused together the pot. That is some serious running. It even went all the way past the stilt onto the kiln shelf. The second thing that I was not planning on happening, and if you're smart, you most likely have noticed already, this part of the stilt broke off. And I assume it's because of the weight of the pot. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's quite a heavy pot. Yeah, you know I like them thick though. When it was in the kiln, it was like this. And then one of the sides broke off and it went from this to this. And unfortunately for me, I was loading a very large piece, which means I loaded a lot of stuff over here. The kiln shelf was right here, it ended up touching, and it fused onto the kiln shelf. And now, I have a little piece of kiln shelf on my piece right here. You know what though? This pot's actually very attractive still. This pot's extremely gorgeous to me. And the glaze combination I just found out is still massively attractive as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean these spots off, and I'm gonna keep this as my new kiln god. I even made a top for it, and the top came out really nice as well. I'm not really sure what gases or what happened to my kiln, but I'm guessing whatever's going on with my pitting over there is happening specifically because I had this big, thick, dark clay body overglazed pot inside of my kiln. Either the kiln gods were real angry at me and gave this to me as a sacrifice, or something around this or the gases it might have released from the actual glaze body or even the clay body itself most likely had to do with those over there because this is the only variable I can really think of other than that it's been rainy for the past couple days in Sacramento. And this came out fantastic also. It didn't run on the bottom because I didn't glaze the bottom. That's the only reason it survived.
If you have another reason or you think something else is going on, please put it down in the comments below. I know there's people who watch my channel that are far more experienced potters than I am, and I actually value and look up your advice all the time. Whenever somebody puts something down below, I always do a little bit of research on it just to see if your guess is valid. And sometimes I get some gold comments. I'm gonna take care of this sexy thickness and clean it up later and put it right above my kiln shelf. You know, it seems kind of troubling, but I actually haven't had anything honestly mess up in this kiln so far, other than that really big piece, and I'm still happy with that really big piece. The majority of these pieces are mostly reglazes. I haven't had to put anything over there in the straight, I'm gonna throw it away and it's bad pile yet. Now these three here are all just no combination, straight Ron Roy's high gloss black. I know they look like nesting bowls, but they're not. I was just experimenting with putting little divots and dents into my clay body while I throw. Ron Roy's high gloss black was actually my very first glaze that I ever created. And I didn't quite understand yet with no black mason stain or no black colorants or oxides or carbonates, how you'd make the color black. And it took a little bit of research into color theory to understand that there's no such thing as the color black in real life. It's really just a combination of colors that make the color black. Ron Roy's high gloss black, however, is made off of red iron oxide and a high amount of cobalt carbonate or cobalt oxide. And the combination of the two make it look so dark blue and red that it almost looks like black to the human eye. In fact, if you put this in the sunlight, you'll probably see that it's brown. There's nothing really wrong with this bowl at all. It's a nice bowl. Um, I'd say maybe my signature is a little bit too harsh down here. But other than that, I give this a good 8 out of 10. I'm most likely going to put some gold luster in this arch right here and give this to Project Empty Bowls for the River City Food Bank and see if they want it for their Empty Bowls project. In fact, most of the bowls that I'm showing you here are going to go to that project as a donation to them. But this, this is fine. This came out just like the other one came out. The other one is just a bigger version of what I just showed you right now. Same exact divot, same everything. Ron Roy's high gloss black. No pits on the inside or anything. It's fantastic. Again, I'm most likely going to put a gold luster right here, and I'm going to give it to empty bowls. It's such a nice straight uniform of black, and some of you with better eyes can most likely see that this is really just really dark brown. It's not exactly black. But when you look at it from back here, if I told you this was the color black, most of you would be like, yep, that's black. Noth nothing, nothing about that. This one over here, I tried to make a mixing bowl with some colorants on the outside, and this isn't crawling. I know it looks like crawling because the clay body is white. This is just hyacinth on top of Ron Roy's high gloss black. Hyacinth is so strong that it actually comes out on top of black. This isn't wax resist, nothing like that. This is just straight. I drew some hyacinth right on there and it went right over Ron Roy's high gloss black. It works out just fine. I think the one issue is that this was at the top of the kiln with that big piece over there. And so it got a little bit of pitting as well, as well as those other pieces over there. So I'm most likely going to reglaze this one right here or just refire it, but other than that, there's nothing wrong with this. This was kind of made as a large mixing bowl, if you can kind of see it. I made it way bigger than all the other bowls. My hand can almost fit in there. And you can mix up some pancakes in here, you can pretend you're, you're a cook at home, and then, and then get on Instagram and be like, oh God, look, I'm good at cooking, but you're not. You just make spaghetti, and then you call it your world famous spaghetti, but really you're just trying to impress your date. You're just trying to feel special in a world where everyone thinks they're special, which makes nobody special. Sorry, I can't tell if I'm too dark or too honest. Okay, are you ready now? Because this is all the good stuff. This stuff is all the good stuff. And yes, I have a couple winners, but I have one main glaze combination, again with my Lumos. It's kind of the MVP of my glazes that I liked a lot. Let's start off with this bowl right here. Now this bowl, is the same exact glaze combination that I showed you the very first bowl out of this entire video. The only difference is this didn't mess up. This is my hyacinth mixed in with my Ron Roy's high gloss black. In case any of you are wondering, this is a very light coat of it on the outside and this is a very thick coat of it on the inside. I like hyacinth because it essentially comes out really light rainbow pink. And the outside of the bowl is all Randy's red. Randy's red doesn't usually come out red for me in actuality. It does sometimes on red clay bodies, but whenever I put it on B-Mix, like the high majority of this entire kiln load, I know for sure it's not gonna come out red anyway. So I kind of just accept this Jasper that it gives me and I'm cool with that. But Randy's Red does a bunch of different things on a bunch of different clay bodies. That's why I keep it in my rotation or my gambit of glazes. 
but I didn't mix the two. If you look on the inside, the inside is hyacinth, and the outside is Randy's Red. I didn't mix these two at all. But this is a really nice big bowl. I like this one a lot. So this is gonna go inside of the good pile. I'm gonna show all three of these to you at once, because these, again, like the last episode we did, is my Tenmoku Gold. You guys remember we were doing all that experimenting with Tenmoku Gold to see if there's anything wrong with it? Well, there's nothing really wrong with it, and this time I didn't put coal in my kiln. It just came out the way it's supposed to this time. Except for this time, I double dipped it, which is the main problem with my Tenmoku Gold. Is number one, it got a little bit under fired, and number two, it didn't have enough glaze on the clay body. But look at it now, this thing is beautiful. It came out good on the inside, it came out good on the outside, there's nothing wrong with this bowl at all. This one is the exact same way. This is kind of the brother of this bowl. This one came out a little bit better. This one came out a little bit better with the crystals and the Tenmoku little gold flakes. And this one doesn't have as much of it. You see it has an entire side where it's just kind of glass-like material. And then the other side of it came out really nice with the Tenmoku gold. But this has it all over, and then this one over here just has it on one singular side. I don't remember if I did this correctly, but I will say I did double dip this on this side, so I think that's part of that equation. But the inside came out just like its brother. Everything came out on one side. The really cool part is that you can really see the way I dipped this, because I held the tongs right here. I dipped it, and then I held both bowls like this. So all the Tenmoku and all the gravity and everything and the glazes and the stuff inside the glaze and all the little chemicals in there went this way as I held it because gravity still takes effect on your pot. So this area ended up way thicker and you can see where all the glaze came out. And that's the way I held it on both of these pots. And technically since it's round, no matter what side it comes out on, I could make this argument, but I'm telling you right now, I, I clamped it right here and it went down. You just have to trust me with this one. These three are gonna go inside the good pile because I'm actually still fairly excited that I now know how to work my Tenmoku Gold recipe. I'm very, I'm very excited that it actually works now. That's kind of the point of being an apprentice potter though, or it's the point of learning your own glazes and your own kiln. It's actually also the point of making your own glazes so you can adjust them and learn how they work out. But if you just bought a glaze and you're using it, then nothing you do to it other than put more chemicals in it, which would assume that you know how to make glazes in the first place would really help them. So at least this way, I have more control over my glazes. It's kind of like iPhones versus Android phones. Yeah, iPhones are more user friendly. You can technically jailbreak them even though the phone doesn't like it. But Androids know that I'm going to actually modify it the way I want to modify it and I can do almost anything with it with ease. I like control over the things that I use, and this promotes that as far as I make my glazes goes. Store-bought glazes are like, no! It's good the way it is, don't mess with it. Okay, are you ready? Because this is what I think was the winner, winners of the entire kiln load. These two are my Lumos mixed in with my Randy's Red, and they're so pure and so nice, and I love them so much. This is my Lumos recipe on the bottom of, I can't remember if it's Randy's Red or if it's Tenmoku Gold. I'm pretty sure it's Tenmoku Gold, but this is a very light variation of Snowfall, I'm pretty sure. You know what, now that I think about it, this is most likely Tenmoku Gold. I put Lumos on the entire body, and then I just dipped it a tiny bit in Tenmoku Gold, and this is the result that I got. It's a very light variation. I didn't heavily glaze it like I did the other pot you saw earlier. But that's the difference in between these two. These two are the exact same glaze. This one is just heavily glazed with Tenmoku Gold, and this one is very lightly glazed with it. This is the main difference. And remember to always put Lumos first. And remember to always put Lumos first, because you do not want to put anything else first over Lumos. Lumos likes to be first. It's a greedy glaze. One of the other reasons I really like Lumos is because if you can see it, Lumos has a very light pink tinge to it. It almost looks iridescent, which is why I named it Lumos. These two are not my favorite, although they did come out the most in sync, so I'm putting them in the good pile. This is my favorite one. This is the exact same combination I just showed you with Tenmoku Gold and Lumos underneath it, but 
This one actually came out true to its name. This one came out real snowfall on the inside and the outside. I can't get over this glaze combination. This is Lumos underneath my Tenmoku Gold recipe. I haven't released the Tenmoku Gold recipe yet, and I know there's an old video out there of me releasing the Lumos recipe, but if you can find yourself both recipes, and I know people out there have it, because some of my subscribers have sent me pictures of them using this same exact combination, much like this. I know that you guys have this recipe somewhere, so don't pretend like y'all ain't got my recipes. Don't, don't be asking for stuff you know you already got. You just didn't look hard enough. I'm gonna put this one in the good pile. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. This was really just a killing opening video to show you guys all the bowls that I was planning on giving to empty bowls. I'll most likely refire that entire stack over there, even though it's only like five or six bowls. And honestly, I'm quite happy with this right here, even though it broke half my kiln shelf. There's so much scrubbing I'm gonna have to do. But to be honest with you, this is so gorgeous that I'm kind of okay, I'm kind of okay with the way the kiln load came out. Like if I got this and those were the sacrifice for this, I'm sort of okay with it. But thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you guys would like to see any of my actual artwork or you'd like to join the clay community on Facebook, there's tons of helpful potters there that are always willing to give some really helpful advice. The links are always down below for your beautiful potter eyes to see. And I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Unlike that redheaded stepchild pile of pottery over there. Um, I'm offended, which makes me a redheaded stepchild, so dislike. You better click that like button.